I have to go get a sales associate to open up a cabinet to buy deodorant at the grocery store, I'm 100% not moving there. And to my wife's probably dislike, I wouldn't even consider a location where when I walk out the door and start walking, between my legs is sweating and I've got to change my shirt within four minutes. So I'm not moving to a place where the humidity is absolutely crazy even if it's wonderful for her skin and hair. Now, this video here is going to be one of those videos where if you're considering moving to Fort Collins in Northern Colorado, that's great. Give me my team a call, text, or email. We are licensed real estate agents in the state of Colorado. Would love to help. But this video also might help you rule out Fort Collins or Northern Colorado as a place where maybe it checks so many different boxes, but these things are really deal breakers for me. Now we've done these videos in the past, but this is gonna be a refresh. These are gonna be eight things that you'd want to consider if you're considering moving to Fort Collins in Northern Colorado, but avoid moving here if you can't stand these eight things. And stick around until the end because there's gonna be additionally four, five, six honorable mentions. So this list is really pretty comprehensive about things that people aren't super stoked about Fort Collins or, or really consider a nuisance. My name is Patrick Sukup. This is the Living in Fort Collins YouTube channel where you come to learn everything there is to know about Fort Collins, Northern Colorado, eat, sleep, play, and things to avoid when considering moving to Fort Collins. So let's jump in today. Let's go. All right, recently Fort Collins increased our sales tax by a half percent from 3.85% to 4.35%, which puts us in Northern Colorado as the highest sales tax rate. So when you're considering moving to an area, you look at cost of living and Fort Collins, our housing costs additionally aren't necessarily the highest in Northern Colorado. Timnath is going to take that spot and Windsor's right behind us. So we're not necessarily the highest there, but we are higher comparatively. And against the rest of the nation, if 100 is the baseline for cost of living, Fort Collins is about 115. So we're about 15% higher than the average place to live as far as cost of living goes. So yes, we are kind of a, a wonderful place to live, wonderful outdoors, way of life. It is a specific focus for people for a, um, a way of living as far as kind of their, the reason that they move here. But cost of living is definitely something that needs to be taken into consideration. And some of these sales tax, we have a quarter cent sales tax that goes towards road maintenance, keep Fort Collins great, capital improvement projects that's going to like our Southeast Community Center. And then we have an additional half cent sales tax that's going to go towards public transportation, parks and recreation, and climate control. So I would say when moving here, consider cost of living as it is definitely not lower than the average and about 15% higher. <laughs> now this one's kind of a, uh, an interesting one, but I would say, and we've had jokes with this with clients, but avoid moving here if you can't handle having a giving mentality. And that means being friendly, being nice, getting involved with that culture that is Fort Collins in Northern Colorado that is smiling, helpful, and there to support and give back to the community. We have so many people here in Fort Collins that are so extremely talented that might not necessarily work here because hey, maybe they're they're working remotely, but or maybe they've been born and raised here and are working as a firefighter or a police officer, but give back into the community. And I would say it is a culture. And so if you don't want to pour into that, yeah, avoid moving here, please. <laughs> All right, so at one point I had red hair and uh, my daughter and, and kids would love me to grow my hair out, but unfortunately, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty balding and I just not a fan of the way that it looks, but I am red hair, blue eyed, fair skinned. And I live in a, in a location where we have over th around 300 days on average of sun per year and have a high altitude. So between those two things, we have a, a sunshine and, and high altitude. So if you move to a place like Phoenix, Arizona, where the altitude's around a thousand feet above sea level comparatively to Fort Collins, which is 5,000 feet above sea level, you might forget even though it's hotter in Phoenix and you're outside more that 
you've got to remember to wear sunscreen, all that kind of stuff. Whereas in Fort Collins, it might be cooler. You still have got to wear sunscreen, a hat, protection, and things of that nature because the UV rays are gonna be more intense here as you're closer. You can get sunburned pretty quickly and it can happen you know, really pretty fast. So avoid moving here if you don't necessarily take care of you know, wearing a hat and, and, and like to wear sunscreen. I will be honest with you. I don't wear sunscreen near as much as I, do, as I should, but I absolutely bring a hat everywhere I need to go so that I can protect that bald head because it can happen super fast. You could be on a back patio and within 15 to 20 minutes have a sunburn. So while it might not necessarily feel super hot, sometimes that sun, even during those winter time periods, is strong and powerful. So avoid moving here if you can't necessarily uh, withstand some of that, that sun and altitude. All right, so Fort Collins is definitely going through some growing pains. We've had about a half percent to 1.5% on average annual population growth really for the last century of our municipality. But over the last few years, we've kind of steadied out and actually have only grown about 0.3% between 2020 and 2023. So our populations slow down, which has given some time to the infrastructure to catch up. But some frustrations from people from Reddit to, uh, for one, and I would say more locals than people new to the town is traffic. But between the annoyance of the traffic light cadence and the traffic in general, people are saying, hey, the infrastructure is not there for Fort Collins to withstand the growth that it's seen, Northern Colorado, I-25. And I would say the, the conversations that I've had with people from, let's say Houston or Boston, New York, parts of California, Los Angeles, there is no such thing as traffic in Fort Collins. And generally you're gonna be at the stoplight one time. But if that's something that's going to be frustrating to you, if you're a little bit of a road rager, or you don't think that, hey, uh, this traffic lights should have the cadence that they do, Fort Collins could be pretty frustrating for you. Now, Izzy and Zach actually just released a video about a month ago about their favorite eats in both Fort Collins and Loveland. And they actually are, are definitely bigger foodies than I am. And there is a common frustration of food options. And again, perspective is everything because you'll talk to people who are from, you know, uh, municipalities or cities or areas where there's 500,000, half million, million people. And yes, in those areas, you're gonna just have more of a selection of different cuisines. And I would say in Fort Collins, for me personally, I definitely have my kind of row of, of restaurants that I explore and like to go eat at. But from somebody with a more distinguished palate, they could be there could be some frustration with the limited amount of options of food choices in Fort Collins. Okay, so if you are a night owl, which I am not, I, I could be in bed every night, 9.30, 9 o'clock and be just fine. But there were times where I like to go out, you know, kind of my earlier 20s and, and have fun. There is definitely a limited nightlife and shops close very early, pretty much Monday through Friday. So if you're coming from a big metropolitan to where cities and shops are open till 10.30, 11 o'clock or, or later at night, and you have different parts of the of the city that you can go explore, you know, uh, Lodo or, you know, D Rhino or different parts of Denver there, there's phenomenal nightlife, you know, the 16th street mall. That's just not going to be here. You pretty much are limited to downtown Fort Collins, Ace Gillette's, Sunset Lounge, Social and, and Cafe Vino. So downtown CSU area, but relatively limited nightlife and not necessarily a college dive bar town anymore because there are plenty of good higher end options, but limited nightlife and shops. If you like to go out and shop at all times of the night, you're gonna find Fort Collins, downtown Fort Collins, a ghost town at nine o'clock on a Wednesday evening. Now, something that Fort Collins is working on, but it is a, a tough thing to do because you're dealing with private property rights, you're dealing with city land use code is our cell service coverage. There are dead spots throughout Fort Collins and they are getting a little bit better. I can give you an example. I, I was eating at Auto Pint probably about a year ago and that is uh, Harmony and uh, LeMay and it, that is generally a dead spot for Verizon. And Verizon 
so either they got an additional cell tower or an extender, a booster or whatever. Now, when I go to any web page to download anything at uh, First Watch, is right, which is right by Autopint, I can absolutely download things, check my internet and, and be just fine. So they are working on cell coverage in and around Fort Collins, but it's not great and it can be annoying. So if you are on that cell phone at all times and or move to a location with bad cell service, it can be absolutely annoying and frustrating. We had a client that reached out to us and asked, how was T-Mobile and Fort Collins and what was my experience? Because they were having some experiencing, they were experiencing some, some terrible cell phone coverage in their location. I said, Verizon, in my opinion, is the best for Fort Collins, but there are areas where T-Mobile is better and areas where AT&T is better. But overall, I think Fort, uh, Verizon is the choice to go. But you could find yourself in a frustrating situation if you move to a neighborhood that had bad cell service for your carrier. All right, and the final one is where you're going to want to avoid moving to Fort Collins unless you can handle this. And that is if you can't handle going slow and taking your time during inclement road conditions, please stay away. During these times, you are gonna to have to leave your house 15 to 25 minutes early during these snowstorms so that you can take your time on the roads to get to work safely. I will say I get super stressed out when we have a snowstorm or icy road conditions because it was raining or melting and it's still gonna freeze at four o'clock during March and my wife's on the road. I absolutely reach out to her and I'm like, please, please, please drive safe, drive slow, take your time. And there are plenty of people that you're gonna see on the sides of the roads, in ditches that were clearly just in a hurry. I will say, the perception could also be bad because I was coming back home from my sister's uh, house where she lives in Haxton, Colorado off Highway 14. And it was, it was uh, inclement, very inclement road conditions. Um, we were driving, I, I was driving 40 miles per hour, which clearly even that was too fast on a 60 mile per hour highway. And I got out from behind uh, some tree coverage, a wind gust hit me, kind of sideswiped me, put me into the, the ditch on the side of the road. Thank God nothing happened, but needed to slow down even in that situation. So even people who are you know born and raised in Colorado, there can be situations where you just need to take your time, go slow, and uh, you, you can avoid some of those accidents and really dangerous situations. So if you can't do that, um, slowing down, taking your time, giving yourself extra time to get to work, to do these different things that happen in Fort Collins during these, uh, in Northern Colorado, during these inclement road conditions, you know, definitely avoid moving here. All right, now for the honorable mentions where we're not gonna dive deep, but we're gonna go high level. Six honorable mentions giving us a total of 14 reasons to avoid moving to Fort Collins if you can't handle them. Here we go. We've talked about it before, diversity, but honestly, the reason why I say honorable mention is because I grew up here in Fort Collins and in the last 35 years, there is so much more diversity than when I was growing up. You know, mixed kids, different races, uh, Asian, Indian, black, white, Hispanic, you name it, I would say Fort Collins has a great diversity in comparison to 30, 35 years ago. So I actually think it's a, it's a non-issue comparatively. Sure, still comparatively to a, a big metro, nowhere near the diversity there. But from when I was growing up here at Fort Collins, it's completely different, very welcoming, very understanding, and much more diversified. And if you're gonna drive to DIA on a weekly basis, Fort Collins is an hour away and the traffic there from uh, Fort Collins to Denver is only getting worse. You know, our population along the front range, Denver, Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, Northern Colorado is only getting more. So it could become frustrating if you're having to drive to DIA on a weekly basis. Now on a monthly basis or every other month or maybe even twice a month, you're probably just fine. But that trip can get taxing if you're doing it on a daily basis. We are no San Diego. We don't have 70 and sunny all year round. We have a distinct summer, fall, winter, and spring. Spring can bring with it hail, summer, hot, summer, 90, 100 degree days. Winter, fall will be one of the best seasons ever. So can't talk shit about fall, unfortunately. And winter, we absolutely get seven to 10 snowstorms a year, which equates to 14 to 20 snow shovels two or more inches is how I calculate it. So if you can't deal with snow, or like we talked about a little bit earlier, 
icy road conditions here and there, definitely not something to consider. Public transportation, I just did a video on this and actually I am actually pleasantly surprised with how good our public transportation is in Fort Collins comparatively to what I thought it was, but we still don't have a great public transit system. So if you are reliant upon having only one car in the, the family or reliant upon being on public transportation, it's not a great city for that, but you can make it work. It's not impossible, plenty of bus stops, good routes, good tools out there, but our public transportation could get better, but much better than what I thought it was. All right, our last two. We have got a dry and arid climate in Fort Collins. Now, being born and raised here, I actually, I never put on lotion. I'm, I'm relatively soft skinned, but I, like I was saying, you know, my wife, she would love to live in a place like Florida where it's great for her hair and, and skin and all that good stuff. Me personally, no freaking way. I'm not about the humidity. There are jokes on Instagram. I can't remember, I think it's the McFarland family. If you don't watch any of their Instagram, they're pretty, pretty funny. But there's a comment, there's a skit, I should say, where the son comes in and says, man, is it hot outside? The dad wakes up bright-eyed, bushy-tailed and says, it's not the heat that gets you, it's the humidity. So it's a, it's a going joke, but I would say Fort Collins dry and arid climate which I love, makes it feel like, uh, even if it's a, a 90 degree day, it makes it feel a little bit cooler. And if you get in the shade, you could drop by 20 degrees pretty easily. But a dry and arid climate, you're gonna need to put on that sunscreen, that lotion on a daily basis, and no humidity. If you, like my wife, want uh, to not have to wear lotion or lather it on on a daily basis. And finally, Fort Collins, not specifically, because it's actually relatively flatlined as far as, as far as population growth goes for the last three years, but Northern Colorado is a growing area. And I can tell you that even in my family, we've got people that have been here since the you know, 50s and 60s that are saying, hey, I miss what Fort Collins was. I, I would prefer to have been a town of 60,000 people rather than 180,000 people. In Northern Colorado, when you can look put into consideration both Larimer and Weld County, it's projected to get to closer to a million people over the next 20 years. So we are a growing area. We're gonna have some growing pains, some frustrations. Along with it, some amenities will come. But if you're looking for an area that's kind of relatively stagnant, a good foundation of amenities, but not necessarily growing too quickly and you know not looking for that area, Fort Collins, Northern Colorado is not for you. It's, it's projected and probably will maintain to grow. And so if that's not for you, avoid moving here. Now we don't have the locked cabinets and my wife would be sad that we don't have the humidity. I think she really wouldn't like the humidity all the time, especially talking to plenty of friends that have moved from humid places. But that being said, those are two things that I would not wanna move towards. And these are 14 different things to consider if you're looking at Fort Collins, Northern Colorado. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to discuss further about these, feel free to reach out, comment, text, or email us, and we'd be happy to answer. Now, again, we are licensed real estate agents, so yes, if all of those things are okay with you and you still wanna to move to what a, what a wonderful place Fort Collins in Northern Colorado is, we'd love to be an assistant and an asset for you and your team. Give us a call, text, or email. And until next time, guys, take care.